The Flawless Prince Once upon a time, in a land far away, there lived a beautiful princess. She lived in a big castle and had many servants to serve her. But the princess was not happy, for an enchanter had fallen in love with her. The cruel enchanter wanted to possess the princess. He disguised himself into a giant cat and followed the princess everywhere. Only a prince could break the curse. It was learned that a prince would have to tread on the giant cat's tail, and thus the princess will be freed. Not too far away lived a handsome prince. He heard about the beautiful princess. This is terrible. The princess has to be freed. Ministers, do not inform about my arrival to anyone. It will only warn the cat. I will tread on its tail while that enchanter is fast asleep. And that's what happened. As night fell, the giant cat was fast asleep. The prince treaded on its tail and suddenly... How dare you! Leave the princess this instant! I command you! <laughs> I will free her, but who will free you? I curse your firstborn son. He will be born with an enormous nose, and he will not become the king unless he truly accepts it. For your kingdom shall only have a truly flawless king. <laughs> this curse doesn't make any sense, thought the prince. My son would instantly realize that he has an enormous nose. And a big nose isn't a flaw. I shouldn't be worried about this. That morning, the princess was the happiest woman in the world. The entire kingdom rejoiced, for the cruel enchanter was gone. The princess readily married the prince. The prince was so happy for having married the beautiful princess that he completely forgot about the curse. And he never told anybody about it. Years passed, and the princess, who was now the queen, gave birth to their first child. <laughs> Prince Hyacinth was born while the king was away on business. But the happiness didn't last long, for the queen couldn't survive. The kingdom hadn't recovered from their loss when another bad news hit. The king's ship had drowned in the sea. Prince Hyacinth was now their only heir to the throne. But there was something amiss about the prince. Oh my, is, is that a normal nose? <laughs> Half of his face is covered. Oh, don't say that. He's our future king. We will have to make sure that we never mention his big nose. There must not be any reason for our prince's embarrassment. It's our duty to conceal it and never let him feel it. And so the ministers and courtiers decided to conceal the biggest flaw on the prince's face. Every photo of men with regular noses was removed from the castle. Every servant, butler, caretaker were warned. No one was supposed to even mention the big nose. Everyone was to praise the prince and his enormous nose. At school, the teachers went as far as altering history. They showed only those warriors who had large noses. Everyone laughed at those who had regular noses. The ministers did everything they could. They even asked some of the handsome men of the kingdom to wear artificial big noses every time they entered the palace. The prince grew up admiring and feeling proud of his big nose. The flaw was concealed. <laughs> My mighty prince, time has come for your coronation, but you are well aware of the rules. <laughs> you will have to get married to truly inherit the throne. I understand, minister. I've been meaning to ask the king of Besfort for the hand of his daughter. She indeed is the most beautiful princess. She does have a small nose, but I have a big heart. I shall accept her flaw. 
<laughs> That's very well, oh handsome one. <laughs> I shall quickly make the arrangements. The courtiers and ministers were so used to lying about the prince's nose. They had forgotten to inform the king of Besfort about the flaw. The king agreed for the marriage, but then... Oh, my prince, my mighty prince, the princess of Besfort has been captivated. There is news that a curse has been out on her. She is held hostage in a crystal palace. Besfort is on the lookout for her right now. What? Who dare do this to her? Prepare the army. I myself will set out to find my princess. And so the prince set off with his men. As they were in the middle of a desert, a sandstorm separated the prince from his men. When he woke up, he found himself on a strange land. He walked and walked, but couldn't find anybody. Ah, uh, I am hungry and very, very thirsty. What do I do now? Oh wait, is that a house? Madam, I have lost my way. Can I get some water to drink and food to eat? Oh, of course. You look tired. Come on in. Wait, is that your nose? It is so enormous. Mind you, I have never seen such a big nose on any living or dead man. <laughs> what? She suddenly started talking so much. And my nose isn't enormous. Her nose is so tiny. But I am hungry, and I must not argue with her. Uh, madam, I am really hungry. Can I have something to eat? Oh, of course. You must be very thirsty, too. Didn't you say you are thirsty? Ah, I shall ask my men to serve you some water anyway. Water is extremely vital for our bodies. You know, I am sorry, but your nose is too distracting. Has it always been this big? Why are you still waiting outside? You look tired. Don't you want to come in? I really do, but I presume you want to talk about my nose rather than invite a thirsty, hungry guest inside your house. Oh, you talk too much. Come on in. I talk too much? Me? Oh my god. Only because I am hungry. As the prince entered the hut, he was surprised. The hut was decorated with the best of antiques. It looked so rich. The prince was taken aback. Is this your house? It is nothing less than a palace. Who are you? Oh, I miss hope, so I built one for myself. You see, I was the queen of a faraway land. A few years back, I lost my way as we set out for hunting. Luckily, I had my jewels and a handful of my men along with me. It's a funny story, really. I didn't realize when I took the wrong turn and went deeper into the woods. When I came out, I saw this place. I was telling my men a story then. A story of a king and a giant enormous cat. But, mind you, the cat was nothing compared to your nose. Oh, is she never going to stop about my nose? She lost her way while she was chattering with her servants. Doesn't she realize that her flaw of talking too much has brought her here? Do you want to hear about the prince and the giant cat? Eh, I would rather... Oh, all right. Now that you insist. So, this cat really an enchanter who cursed the prince when he treaded on his tail. Oh, I understand now. The servants are taught to ignore the queen's flaw. She talks too much, but they are told to never mention it. How silly! How can someone not see their own flaws? Are you listening to me? How is it that your nose never bothers you? Now that the prince wasn't hungry anymore, he couldn't take it. Madam, I request you to stop mentioning my nose. It is utter rude. Did I mention that you chatter like a parrot? Or that you have an awfully small nose? My nose makes me handsome. I am proud of it. Thank you for the food. I shall leave to find my princess. 
I presume you have no mirror at your mighty palace. And even if you do find your princess in the crystal palace, how will you break the curse by kissing her hand? Won't your handsome nose come in the way? I bet you cannot see your own feet with that enormous thing on your face. I am a respectable prince. I will not indulge in petty arguments with you. I will leave this instant. This is strange. She is right. I can't see my feet. This must be normal for many mighty kings and queens. What would she know? She didn't even realize that she gave me a way to break the curse. On his way, the prince came across a market. Many people passing by pointed at the prince's nose and giggled. This is strange. Everybody here has such tiny noses. They find mine weird. This whole kingdom is strange. But doubt had started to make its way in the prince's mind. Everyone had tiny noses, but nobody looked ugly with it. As he reached the Crystal Palace, he called out to the princess. Princess, it's me, Prince Hyacinth. I have come to rescue you. Oh, here you are. But what is that on your face? Is that your nose? We can talk about your tiny nose later. Let me break the curse. The prince climbed the castle and took the princess's hand. As he was about to kiss her, he realized his lips can't touch the princess's hand. <sighs> I am sorry, princess. I can't break the curse. I never realized this before. My nose is indeed enormous. My whole kingdom made me feel perfect with this nose, but it is a flaw and I have to live with it. Wait, you! You are the same old woman who wouldn't stop about my nose! How did you reach here? Where are your servants? I am not a queen, my prince. I had to disguise myself to make you see the flaw in yourself. Your kingdom was cursed by an enchanter. You were to truly accept your flaw to become the king. And now you have broken the curse. Haven't you seen your nose, my prince? My... my nose? Oh, it's a regular size now. So, I don't have any flaws now. No, oh, my child. We all have flaws. You didn't break the curse by shrinking your nose. Self-love is indeed important, but too much of it keeps us from knowing our own defects. We achieve what we truly want only when we identify our flaws. Just like how you found your princess and broke the curse by realizing your flaw. Only when we see our own flaws, we become flawless in true sense. The prince and princess went back to their kingdom and got married. The kingdom now had a truly flawless king. <laughs>